Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch with round two in the Epic versus Apple battle that has just begun. And if you don't know, this one broke just a couple of days ago. So we're looking. So today here, as I'm recording this, is August 17th. We go back in time just a few days to August the 14th. Epic launched a lawsuit against Apple after Apple pulled Fortnite off the App Store. Now, this was not a shock to anybody when basically... Uh, Epic added in-app purchases using their own server option. Basically, they passed on a savings for in-app currency, V-Bucks, in Fortnite onto their users and basically gave them the option of paying $9.99 to use Apple's in-app purchase, or you could use um, Epic's backend server for in-app purchases for $7.99, with 100% of the savings actually being passed on to the users. Now, of course, they did this with the expectation that their product would be yanked from the App Store. They had a lawsuit up and ready to go almost immediately, and it happened. In fact, later in that day, um, uh, Google actually followed suit and pulled them from the App Store as well. But there is a massive difference between Google's approach and Apple's approach to walled gardens. Specifically, Google has a door in their garden. You can sideload applications. You don't need to use the Google App Store to install apps on their products. Whereas in Apple land, you need to use the App Store. You need to use their in-app purchase system. You need to follow all of their rules, and their rules can be very arbitrary at times. So there is a fight that has been waiting to happen. I'm not even going to pretend to be biased, unbiased on this one. I think Apple's hubris is so far past due, and I'm glad that Epic are going to battle on this one. This is going to benefit the developers and the ecosystem and everything else. But the problem is there was a countersuit on this, and Apple being Apple just went way too far. Basically, they have called on, uh, they have stated straight out in the counter lawsuit. This is what you're seeing here. This document right here is actually um, Epic Games' response to Apple's re re response to their lawsuit. I know that gets a little confusing, but basically Apple said, all right, Epic Games, you are no longer allowed to use any development tools on macOS or iOS, period, going forward after X date. That means no more development of Epic Games, no more, uh, sorry, Unreal Engine can't be updated. All Unreal Engine developers are going to suffer because of this. So we're going to get into some of the details about how they retaliated. But first, before we get back into this one, I want you to watch a video. What's to stop Apple from increasing its commission to 50 percent? We, Sir, we have never increased commissions in the store since the first day it operated in 2008. But there's nothing what, to stop you from doing so, is it? No, sir, I disagree strongly with that. There is a competition for developers just like there's a competition for customers. And so the competition for developers they can write their apps for Android or Windows or Xbox or PlayStation. So we have fierce competition at the developer side and the customer side, which is a, which is essentially it's so competitive. I would describe it as a street fight for market share in the smartphone business. Has Apple ever retaliated against or disadvantaged a developer who went public about their frustrations with uh, the App Store? Sir, we don't, we do, do not retaliate or bully people. It's strongly against our uh, company culture. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was CEO Tim Cook, and it pretty much summarizes my entire opinion on this. Tim Cook is a lying sack of, all right, we'll finish it there. Let's keep this one PG. Basically, that is endemic of the hubris at Apple. That was them lying to Congress, 100%. Oh, we don't retaliate against developers. Okay, two weeks later, boom, that is exactly what they did. So back to the basically counter motion from uh, Epic Games to have this basically this ruling overthrown because of the damages it would do to Apple, the retaliatory strike here. So basically what they've said is Apple's retaliation was swift and decisive. The morning Epic made these options available, uh, Apple removed Fortnite from the App Store, ensuring that millions of players would immediately lose the ability to use Fortnite to connect to their family and friends. Soon after, Apple filed its lawsuit against Apple, challenging its monopoly on App Stores and in-app purchases. So that was basically uh, the 14th. And so now what we've got... Um, less than 12 hours later, a Apple notified Epic it was terminating Epic from the Apple developer programming, blocking all Epic products from distribution uh, through Apple's App Store. Apple specifically stated it would terminate Apple, 
Epic's access to development tools, including those necessary for Epic to keep offering the world's most popular graphics engine, the Unreal Engine. Uh, the Unreal Engine is used to develop a wide array of products, including films, uh, games, sorry, games, films, biomedical research, and virtual reality. Millions of developers rely on Unreal Engine to develop software, and hundreds of millions of consumers use that software. Epic now seeks a preliminary injunction described um, with more specific specificity in the accompanying company. I can say specificity but I can't say accompanying. Okay. Uh, proposed order restraining Apple from removing, delisting, uh, refusing to list or otherwise make available uh, the Fortnite app, including any Fortnite update from the App Store because it provides Fortnite users choice and lower prices on in-app purchases. Epic further seeks an order prohibiting Apple from taking steps against Epic's other games and against the Unreal Engine in retaliation for Epic steps to offer Fortnite users choice and lower prices on in-app purchases. Epic satisfies all elements for preliminary injunctive relief. Uh, so yeah, there we at there. They, they go on to basically describe how this will hurt them, which is no doubt uh, uh, true. Uh, they're, they're kind of overselling it a bit. The ensuing impact on Unreal Engine's viability and the trust and confidence developer having that engine cannot be repaired with a monetary reward. I think this one is actually a little ironic because what this should do is give developers a lack of trust in Apple. You have no idea when they're going to kick your tool of choice off. People have already been screwed. All the uh, um, the Air developers back in the day when you know Apple pretty much arbitrarily ruled against VMs in their war against Adobe Air. Uh, Air is effectively dead now. Um, and the developers paid the price on that one. Everyone had to all of a sudden do a ahead of time compilation on um, all iOS apps, all, making iOS apps on something like, you know, the Godot game engine right now. The Godot developers are so sick of Apple's crap that they're tempted to just not support it. We've already got it so that they don't support Vulkan, the, the industry standard. In order to support Vulkan on an Apple platform, you have to use something called Molten VK. They killed OpenGL support off. They're, they're just doing these anti-developer things. They're also making it so that you've got to sign your applications, making it so that open source applications are just not viable on Apple products. Plus, they keep breaking everything. And then we could just go into the general quality of their products going down the toilet. But that one is just a rant for some other day. So the key to this one here is ultimately the Sherman Act. You'll see it mentioned quite a few times, the Sherman Act, the Sherman Act. So they think, basically, Apple say that they are uh, highly likely to succeed on the merits of an antitrust case, and, and it's all around the concept of the Sherman Act. Epic is likely to prove that this conduct is uh, A, tying per se, B, an unreasonable restraint of trade under Section 1 of the Sherman Act under the rule of reason, C, unlawful maintenance of a monopoly under Section 2, and D, denial of access to an essential facility under Section 2. So if you're wondering about what exactly the Sherman Act is, well, here is the text of it. And, and again, this thing was written in, I think, 1890. So it's got 1890-ish text. It looks like they do update it because I can't imagine you could be fined $100 million in 1890. But every contract combination in the form of trust or otherwise or conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce among the several states or with foreign nations is declared to be illegal. Every person who shall make any contract or engage in any combination of conspiracy hereby declared to be illegal shall be deemed guilty of a felony and on conviction thereof shall be punished by a fine not exceeding 100000 if a corporation or if any person a uh, million dollars or by imprisonment not exceeding 10 years or by both said punishment in the discretion of the court. Yeah, so back in 1890, that was established. And that sounds a little vague. Uh, so you can actually see a bit of a definition of why they think the Sherman Act is going to apply here right here. So this is the anti-tying thing. Apple conditions the use of the tying product, the app store, on the use of the tied product, the in-app purchases. Each product occupies a separate market. And you really can't argue that, that the app store and the back-end in-app purchase, those are separate markets. Uh, you know, in I imagine in Apple's accounting, perhaps not. Uh, as the Supreme Court has instructed, the outer boundaries of a product market are determined by the reasonable interchangeability of use or the cross-elasticity of demand between the product itself and the substitute for it. Um, Da, 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 da. A relevant market must include uh, the groups or the group or groups of seller or products who have actually who have actual or potential ability to deprive each other of significant levels of business. And they kind of go on a little bit to describe how, because you got to keep in mind when they're writing these documents, the person on the other end of it isn't necessarily a technical person. They may not even understand what an in-app purchase is. So they basically, here, here's how an in-app purchase might work, a little bit of an explanation of how all of these things work. But what they're essentially arguing is that the uh, tying of these two things together, so the tying of the app store 
to the in-app purchases. So if you want to use one, there go, you have to use the other. That is where the monopolistic behavior is coming in here. And that is what is in um, is violation of this act right now. So there's where we stand right now. Where it comes down though, the way that Apple are retaliating here it's basically screwing every single Unreal Engine developer. So like, I don't know how in good conscience you can commit yourself to working and targeting their platforms, at least as a first run, because there's already so many scummy things they have done. They don't allow duplication. If they make an app, you can't compete in that market because, oh, we've already made an app in that market. They do things like make it so that you can't uninstall their apps from uh, certain locations on their device or at all. There's a lot of really scummy things Apple already does. But when it comes to developers, the way that they're outright abusing them. So they're retaliating against Epic and Fortnite by going after Unreal Engine. And that is going to impact hundreds to to thousands to tens of thousands of developers shipping Unreal Engine games. And I again, I don't think this necessarily gives Unreal Engine a black eye. I think it does harm or it should do harm, and I really hope it does do harm to developers considering playing in Apple Sandbox because this is how they treat their developers. And going back to that interview from Tim Cook, they also lie. So that's where we are with this one. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where this goes. But uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of went from 10 years ago liking Apple to <laughs> to dislike. And, and I'm now kind of moving into the world of, unfortunately, hatred. But I guess, hey, that's the way of 2020. I wonder where you stand on all this. I know people that hated Apple all along. This ain't going to make it any better. And I know that people that hate Epic Games all along, this isn't going to make you feel any better either. But uh, to all those people that aren't in either of those camps, what do you think of this escalation? And I hate to see that it's you know innocent Unreal Engine developers in the mix that are going to pay the price. Unless, of course, um, they get this injunction. And, and hopefully, at least from my perspective, Epic Games wins that. All right, so that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.